This entire gaming PC setup costs just $257. That's right, that includes the monitors, keyboards, computer, mouse, headset, everything. I really enjoy creating content and I've had people ask me, hey, what would it cost to start building a computer if I wanted to stream from real hardware, maybe stream some PC games itself and not spend too much in the process. So it got me thinking, well, how low could we go but still have a usable system? Now, originally I was thinking about getting one of these pre-built systems like this Firebat 7735HS Ryzen system. However, you're really locked into the CPU and the video that's built into the board itself because it's all soldered on. You can really upgrade the memory and the storage, but that's about it. And then I was going to recommend something like maybe one of these older Dell Inspiron laptops, which you can get for about 150 bucks. However, the problem with those is that the CPU is not supported officially for Windows 11. Yeah, there are some workarounds, but I wanted to make it something that you wouldn't have to worry about too much once you put the system together. You wouldn't have to worry about editing any registries or anything like that. You can just go through the motions once Windows 10 support ends. Now to preface, this is a system that is a mix of new and used parts here. It's going to be acquired from local and online retailers. We've got stuff from eBay, we've got stuff from Amazon, thrift store, uh, marketplace and I wanted to avoid using micro center as much as possible because I know not everyone has a micro center near them but I did end up using it for the case more on that later and why I think you could probably replicate what I did at micro center online now this project took me about a month and I was combing through Facebook marketplace for most of it trying to find any good deals that we could and a lot of these parts were really solid however some of them were at such a distance that I felt like I was going to have to start including gas and time into the cost because maybe they were 30 miles each way. And this is what I ended up settling on. For the CPU, we're using a Ryzen 2600X. This is a 6-core, 12-thread CPU, and it was including the stock cooler. Now, it's not the fastest CPU by today's standards, but it is on the Windows 11 compatibility list, so that'll get you past that October uh, 2025 cutoff date. The motherboard is an MSI X470 Gaming Plus ATX, which did include the I.O. shield, which is missing more often than not. And while I wish this was a micro ATX board because of the cost savings we would have had, I'm not mad because of the features that it has like two NVMe slots and four RAM slots. This board is also compatible with 3000, 4000, and 5000 series Ryzen CPUs, so that gives us a good upgrade path. We have 16 gigs of Corsair DDR4 2400 Vengeance RAM. It's not the fastest, but it'll get the job done for now, and we can always upgrade later, especially with how cheap RAM is. I know someone's going to bring it up, so we'll tackle it now. Thermal paste is not included in the cost here because I've had this tube for a while, but this is the only thing that is going to be like that. These things cost anywhere from 4 to $7, so it's a small cost overall, so add 4 to $7 to the overall cost. Now that we have the thermal paste added, we're going to go ahead and secure the cooling fan to the board to make sure that it's all set there, and once the screws are tight, you're good. For storage, we have a Western Digital SN720 NVMe, which I was pretty happy to get at $26.50 shipped off of eBay. However, I had a great shipping experience, as you can see their packaging here, where it was just thrown into a box with one little piece of bubble wrap, and well, that was it. When I went to install the drive, I realized I didn't have the M.2 screw that was needed to secure it to the riser, but luckily a few months back I actually bought an NVMe heatsink off of AliExpress because I wanted to see if it was any good, and it had two M.2 screws in it, so I decided to add to the build because it fit the theme as well. For the case, I went with an Inland X3. It's got a mesh front, which is great for the airflow, and I was really surprised to see at this price point that it actually has a real tempered glass side panel. It also includes four fans, one at the back and three here at the front, which is pretty solid. It's also got a basement and a spot to add fans at the top. Like I said, I did use Micro Center for this one, and I tried avoiding doing so, and it is possible to find full-size ATX cases online if you're patient. I found this one here, for instance, at BH Photo Video, where it was about $35 before shipping. However, if you spent $50 there, it would become free, so you might be able to get a little bit of savings on another peripheral that you needed. It is possible if you're super patient, but this is where Micro ATX would have been more handy, because you can find those cases shipped for $30-$35 much more frequently. For the GPU, I went with an Asus GTX 1060 6GB. Now, there are two different versions of the GTX 1060 out there. Ones like this with 6GB and other ones with 3 gigs. If you decide to go with the 1060, make sure that you do get the 6GB one, not only because of the doubled VRAM, but it also has more processing cores. They decided to cut about 10% of them off for the 3GB models, so you're just sacrificing performance and memory altogether. Now, I did haggle with the owner of the motherboard CPU and RAM to get this for just $25 more than what I paid them for those three components. I know a lot of people hate doing the front panel here, but if you look at your motherboard, there's usually a map that's printed right on it that'll tell you exactly where to put all the pins. 
for the power supply, I went with the MSI Mag 550 watt bronze here. It is non-modular and it's also the single most expensive component of this build. And while there are cheaper power supplies out there like the Thermaltake Smart Series, this one was just ranked a little bit higher on the almighty PSU tier list and it does give us a little bit of room for growth in the future. Now that we got everything hooked up and we did a decent cable management here, we're going to make sure this thing powers on. Gotta say, I like the way the fans look, and they're pushing a decent amount of air, and they're not too loud either. For the first monitor, we went with the Dell S2340M. This is a 23-inch 1080p monitor, and while it is glossy and only comes with VGA and DVI, it did come with the DVI to HDMI cable, which did save us a few bucks, and hey, at least it's IPS. Now for the keyboard, I was originally going to use this Unlocked branded one from Five Below, which was a whopping $5.85, and yeah, it's really not that good of a keyboard. It'll get the job done if you desperately need one, but there might be some cheaper alternatives out there. But this is what I started with, but keep note of that for later. For the mouse, we went with another Five Below item for another $5.85, and I have to say, this mouse here does not feel any different than a mouse I've gotten from AliExpress for $0.79, cents, so take that for what it's worth. I'm going to go ahead and grab my Windows 10 key here. I'm going to get Windows 10 Pro installed on this system. While that's installing, we'll go ahead and take a look at the headset that we use here. And this is another one from Five Below for $5.85. It does have a microphone. It does use 3.5 millimeter connections. And it's really no frills at all. It barely fits my pretty big head, too. I was going to be totally content with this setup. However, I got fortunate when I was walking around a Salvation Army the next day, and I found this great set of keyboard and mouse here from MSI for half the price of what I paid for the mouse and keyboard from Five Below. So I took those back, and with the savings there, I actually found another monitor, a 22-inch Dell at the ReStore for another $10.60. Now, since I did say I wanted this to be able to stream, I picked up a webcam here for $4.17 to ship from AliExpress. And I have to say, for that cheap of webcam, it looks fine, especially if you shrink it down onto a screen like you would when you're actually streaming. Uh, the microphone here, though, on these headphones is not that good, as you can tell. And the headset itself is already broken. You can see a big old crack here. So this is definitely a temporary solution I'll have to find a fix for soon. So now that we have our finished setup, let's actually put this thing to the test and see how it performs in gaming. First, we've got Grand Theft Auto V here, DirectX 11, with all the settings turned up to the max as we could. And yeah, we're getting into the 40s and 50s. It's a pretty playable frame rate for sure, but it's maxing out what the system can do. Turn the settings down to medium, though, and we start flirting with the hundreds at some points during the benchmark. Turning down the settings would also probably help you when it comes to streaming, as this is less taxing on your system and you're still getting pretty good frames. Next up, we have Resident Evil 4 Remake on the balance preset with FSR turned off completely. And yeah, this is also super playable here. We're in the 70s at points of this game. I played Mercenaries while I was doing this and actually set a couple of my own personal high scores. Next up, we've got Counter-Strike 2 here, and I turned up every setting that you possibly could and found myself having another great time playing this one online. Afterburner doesn't like Counter-Strike, so I went ahead and just took a zoom-in shot here. These are the frames that we were working with. I've been playing Apex Legends a bit more myself, and I've been finding myself having a pretty good time with it. And on this system, yeah, it didn't have any problems. We turned up most of the settings here. You can take a look and see what we've got going on, and the frames were totally playable. I didn't even experience much chug on the drop, which seemed to be the biggest problem with these older systems. We were keeping about in the 70s and 80s, which was totally playable during skirmishes, even though I'm not that good at it. But you can see here that, yeah, the frame rate was definitely holding on, and you can see how much of the system it's using. We're clearly GPU bound. Cyberpunk is like the new crisis. You gotta test that on every system you build, right? Now for this, I did go with a low preset at 1680 by 1050 with no FSR to see how it would perform. And yeah, we're getting into the 50s and 60s. And even turning on AMD's FSR, thank you for making that open source, yeah, it was only about in the 60 frame per second. Now for Fortnite, I went ahead and did the performance preset at 1080p, and yeah, this thing was totally playable. However, I did notice one instance when I was playing the game where we had our most violent chug out of all tests. I was running, and it straight up froze. This is actual gameplay there. Somehow I didn't die, but yeah, that was the worst chug that I had in the system. I also did test the system out to see how it would do streaming. We did a simple game of Monster Rancher 1 just to make sure it wasn't too much, and there was no problems at all. Going into this project, I wanted to see if you could build a $250 system that was able to play games, you could do content creation on it, and had an upgrade path, and I really feel like we nailed it with this system here. The motherboard being an X470 means that we can put in a Ryzen 3000, 4000, or 5000 series chip and have plenty of CPU options to grow into while already having a pretty decent one right now. 
As far as its capabilities of creating content, I actually edited the entire video on this system here, and it didn't give me any problems in doing so. Honestly, I think the biggest shortcoming of this entire system is just the headphones, but other than that, I think you could replicate this with similar parts at a similar budget and have great results. So let me know what you think, and cheers.